How's it going guys? My name is Moose and welcome to Scrap Mechanic. Now this is going to be a tutorial guide if you like on how to use timers in Scrap Mechanic. Um, in my Scrap Mechanic challenge videos I've got a 15 minute countdown timer and quite a few people were asking me how it was built, how it worked. So I'm going to be explaining the principles of timers and I'm going to be showing you a small replica how to build a smaller version if you like of the clock and you can do what you like with it. So first of all the principles of time. There aren't any timer blocks in the game at the moment so we have to improvise and we're doing that using controllers. I've got a switch set up here which is just linked in to turn this controller on and then a simple single bearing setup. I'm just going to put a wooden arm on here so you can actually see that bearing working when we turn the switch on. If we have a look in the controller, everybody knows that who's played Scrap Mechanic, that that bearing number one there relates to uh, this strip here within the controller with the number one on it. And most people would perhaps just set their angle, hit the button and see it work. Great. But what some people don't know is that you don't have to put that angle in this first sequence. You can in fact put it further down the line. If we put it over here, you actually end up with a delay before that bearing is activated. I'll just uh, let that tick over and you can see that working for yourself. There we go. We can turn the switch off again. And this is a basic principle of how uh, timers work. On the very fastest setting, on the bottom here of the controller, where you can change the speed, each one of these sequences is one second in length. So if I wanted a five second delay, then I could put my bearing on the fifth sequence in. There are nine preset speeds for the controller. It does look like this is just a general slide bar but it will actually snap to the nearest position. There are nine positions like I said the fastest is one second and then as you go slower and slower it's increased by half a second so one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half all the way down to the slowest setting which is five seconds per sequence. So that does mean that we can have a delay on one controller of 50 seconds. But how do I use it to get a longer amount of time? Uh, like in my Scrap Mechanic Challenge videos, we've got a 15 minute timer. So how, how does that work? Well, all we need to do to make this longer than 50 seconds is put a sensor in the position around here. Now obviously um, you are going to be able to interfere with this as a person so when you've finished everything you can put a uh, a block across like that. Now that isn't going to activate your sensor because it's attached to the same building that the sensor is and it doesn't register anything that's directly attached to the building where the sensor is unless there's a bearing in between. Okay so what we then do is put another controller in, just here, and that sensor turns on the next controller. That controller is then attached to another bearing, and essentially what we've got here is a string of sequences. On the 50th second, this second controller will be, will be activated, and then if we put the second controller on the slowest settings, we've got even more time. Now the way I got it to work with 15 minutes, obviously I needed to tap off every 12 sequences which was equal to one minute. After one minute the light would be rotated back out of view. So then guys, all of our um, controllers and sensors have been set up here. I've actually had to put six controllers down. Uh, for the purposes of this, of this demonstration. I'm just going to continue with building this arm. So we've basically got a bearing down here with a small wooden arm 
which is going to come out here. And because we can't turn the lights on and off, let me just attach this bearing to a controller. It's going to have to be the second controller. Because we can't turn the lights on and off, I'm actually having to rotate the light back out of view. Let me just find the light and we'll use it here. Like that. Then we can continue to put uh, the other arms in in a similar manner. You'll also notice I've got uh, the slanted blocks where the lights leave the building. That's because if I had full blocks, the lights would actually collide with them as they were rotating in and out of view. Um, so it, it's not just for decoration. They, they have actually been put there as slanted blocks uh, to stop the lights crashing into things. I'm actually just going to speed this part of the video up and I'll come back to you when I've finished building these arms. So then I've created a smaller replica. There's only five lights here instead of the 15. And I've strung all of these arms up to their respective controllers. Let me just show you how that was figured out. Obviously, for, it, for each of these lights to signify a minute, I've already established that each controller can only do 50 seconds, which means I need to tap off on the 12th sequence each time, so 12, 24, 36, and that will be a minute each time. Okay then, so everything's been strung up and will work. I'm not using the slowest setting on the controller because for the purposes of this demonstration, I don't really want to wait five minutes. It's actually on the fastest setting, which means each light will disappear after it should be 12 seconds. Uh, because that's the 12th sequence each time. So we'll just see a couple of those go. There's the first one. And then in 12 seconds time, the second one should disappear. And so on and so on. You can hear the noises in the background as the next controller in line is activated. Then we've just got these three more. Tick tock. <laughs> I don't think we need to see the other two work, do we? But yeah, that's just the basic principles of the time clock, guys. If you've got any questions, please leave me them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. <laughs> so how might we use this in-game? Well, when survival mode is implemented, we all know that uh, toilet roll is essential to survival. We might be able to set up a little man trap. The opponent will see our toilet roll stash through our window, we'll think, oh, I quite fancy that. They'll go around to our door, they'll open the door, they'll run inside, pick up what they like, and then they'll find that the door has closed behind them. All because we have set up within our controller a timer so that after three seconds, the door closes again. So that's just uh, an example of how the timer can be used. They shouldn't be able to get out. Obviously, in creative mode, I can just delete the wall and uh, mosey on out. But <laughs> hopefully in survival, it's going to be a lot more difficult for other people to delete your stuff. And this little device here is a clock that I've set up, a countdown timer. Uh, it's set to the middle setting, which is 30 seconds. And each sequence is 18 degrees, which will put it at a total of 180 degrees. Now, if you haven't seen countdown, uh, don't worry about it. It's an English... TV program and if you're English and you haven't seen it then ask your grandparents. Okay then guys I'm going to give you some random letters and in 30 seconds you've got to arrange those into the longest word you possibly can. You ready? Go! Please don't judge me. It's not my fault. It seems to go a lot quicker on TV. Anyway, guys, 
Be sure to let me know what answers you got in the comments below. That's the principles of time as in scrap mechanic. You can do lots and lots of things with it. I'll leave that up to your imagination. But anyway, thanks for watching. If you like the video, please hit the like button. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next video.